Hi everyone, I was up on Dartmoor recently, which is a big kind of national park, uh, probably about five, six miles from where I live. Uh, beautiful area, really stunning landscapes. And one of the cool things is that the sheep and horses, as you can see here, are free to roam wild. And in the UK, that's a fairly rare thing. Generally speaking, our animals are kept in you know, quite well contained fields. You know, don't get me wrong, they've got plenty of room, but generally speaking, they're not sort of uh, wandering across the road and so on. But the animals up here, they're very used to the cars going by and people wandering by. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a few quick watercolour marker sketches of these horses, because I haven't sketched horses in a little while. And I've got some plans for a horse painting coming up soon. And I thought that would also give me the opportunity to update you all on what what's been happening recently. Um, so the first thing I wanted to address was what happened to my Landscape Artist of the Year entry. So if you remember, what I was doing was I was working on another horse and Dartmoor painting um, and I was publishing my progress on the channel and then I had another painting on the go which was a view of Exeter High Street and what happened was as mentioned in a previous video a family member had to go into hospital and all went well and they came out but kind of I just didn't really feel like doing the video so I probably could can, could have continued with my patented do 10 minutes a day no matter what technique but I just wasn't really feeling like it so I still kind of planned on entering and what I did instead was instead of finishing those paintings which I do plan on finishing on the channel at some point in the future so if you were watching along I'll kind of finish the demos so that you can you know see those paintings come to completion but what I decided to do was I thought, well, I'll just bang in three landscape paintings that I've got to hand that I've created in the last year. So I did that. I didn't get in. But as in previous years, I'd hoped, well, maybe I'll go in as a wildcard artist. So that was my original intention. So I got rejected as expected, was going to go and apply to be a wildcard. But a couple of things went against me. The first was that um, the locations were qu really quite a long way away from home and that wouldn't really have put me off too much but then the family member who'd been in hospital had come out then actually took a fall at home while, while recovering and had to go back into hospital for two weeks having you know fractured a leg so they're back home now recovery's going well all is good fingers crossed but that's why I th so i just thought okay this is not the year for landscape artist of the year for me uh, but one of the things it's done for me, actually, in terms of Landscape Artist of the Year, is just made me think, oh, you know, I was really lucky to get in that first year I, I applied as a wildcard artist. So it's made that um, experience from 2019, I think, even more treasured in my memory. You know, so so there we go. But I intend to apply, to apply again next year, uh, all being well. The other thing that was happening was I had a commission going for multiple farm animal drawings. And um, I'll pop those up on screen a little bit later in this video. And uh, that, but that went well. I managed to get those done. Um, and then the other thing that happened was I was contacted by another artist who wanted to license one of my images in order to paint it onto the back of a leather jacket. So um, I had to kind of deal with all of that as well. So I just had to prioritize basically. But in terms of the sketches I'm doing here today, I was inspired in particular by this little foal rolling around. Um, and I'm quite, I'm often quite taken with unusual poses for animals. So that's why I kind of was drawn towards this particular reference photo. And I quite like the contrast of the, the, the foal with the adult, but also the, uh, the fact you've got a very conventional grazing pose versus the one with the foal rolling on its back. So as mentioned, the, the animals on Dartmoor are free to roam. I think they are owned by people, but they're just free to roam, you know, pretty much wherever they want. Um, that's also true of the New Forest in the UK, which is sort of central south of England, um, probably about two and a half hours from here, something like that. Um, but as I said, pretty rare to have animals just wandering so free. Uh, they, yeah, they tend to be in paddocks or fields or whatever. Um, but I've tried to stay fairly loose and simple with this little sketch. I'm much happier with the way I've depicted the, the foal so far than the adult. Uh, but I really enjoy doing these quick sketches with the watercolour marker because I kind of feel it's, um, 
I don't know, it's just a really lovely medium to draw with. It's lovely and smooth flowing. Uh, you can move it around with some water afterwards if you want to. That's not what I'm doing in this case. But I also like using the, I think this is burnt umber, but even if it's not, kind of a neutral brown colour because it's kind of timeless, really. I think, I think brown, even though it's a modern drawing, it kind of gives it a timeless quality. So let me show you these. Um, let me show you these farm animal drawings that I created on commission. Uh, this is for a farm in the southeast of England, but I was actually contacted or commissioned to do the work by a graphic designer. So thanks very much, Murig, if you happen to be watching. Much appreciated. Um, so these are the finished sketches. I, I think I've shown you the Belted Galloway cattle sketch before. These are done on Bristol board, which is a super smooth drawing paper, something I really like draw, drawing on. And then I've used uh, a 9B pencil and black ballpoint pen to capture the animal. Um, I really enjoyed getting back into drawing in this style. It's not something I've done that much of recently. So this summer, I hope to do a little bit more of that. And I've got a little project planned um, along those lines. But um, yeah, so that's the plan there. Anyway, there's the belted Galloway. Next one up was this uh, Dexter cow. Uh, so obviously, belted Galloway, black and white. Dexters are normally black. So, but we had to kind of come up with a plan in terms of how dark do we want to go. And this is kind of the level of deepest tone that we decided on. So there's the Dexter, typical kind of side, side view, best of show. This is one of my favourites, two Highland cattle. I feel I've managed to get a nice range of characterful marks included in the um, in the in the hair on the on these really shaggy coated cattle. And what I try to do is just hide my signature and the date somewhere within the drawing, so it's not overly obvious. So I kind of quite like the idea that people have to look a little bit to find the signature, but it it, it is always there, unless I've, of course I've forgotten. Um, this is a Sussex cow. Um, again, another side view, best of show. And then we've got the badger faced sheep, which I was very, very happy to discover, a Welsh mountain sheep. Um, again, that's one of my favourite new animals to paint. If you remember, I did a painting of a badger faced sheep just the other month on the channel. Then we've got, I think these are called boar goats. I'm not quite sure about that, but these are the sort of long eared, uh, floppy eared goats. Uh, and that one came out okay as well. And then finally, uh, a pig, Gloucester Old Spot pig drawing. And again, uh, fairly happy with that one. So the idea is the farm is going to use these drawings in their marketing and on their website. That's not up and running just yet. And that sort of thing is out of my hands. That somebody else is doing all of that stuff. But they are using the Belted Galloway cow drawing already on one of their banners for, because they have a stall at a farm shop. So that was kind of cool to see that. I always love to see my art out in the real world. That, that's uh, you know, a very satisfying little experience. But back to Dartmoor. So the second sketch that I'd started on just before I showed you the farm animal drawings was inspired by this little foal again. Uh, sitting on the ground there with front legs outstretched. Uh, and again, you know, I'm sure if you're involved with horses uh, as part of your life, you know, you see uh, them adopting this pose quite regularly. But I was quite amused because it just reminded me of our pet cat who likes to sit quite often on his little, uh, we've got like a little walkway for him, which is just, uh, you know, a few inches wide. Uh, and he quite often likes sitting on that more or less in the same pose. So I thought, oh, it's cool that this little foal has adopted that position as well. So I actually did two or three other quick sketches between the one I showed you previously and this one, and they didn't work out that great, to be honest with you. But um, one of the cool things about doing these quick studies is uh, I think it's a great way to just A, warm up, and B, just train the eye and the hand to try and capture proportions uh, without too much measurement. So for example, with this pose, I, I, I definitely done two of these before, I think, and they weren't too bad, but I re hadn't really quite locked in the proportions as well as I had liked. And even with this current drawing, it's not perfect, you know, by any means. Um, for example, the head in my drawing is not as pointed as it should be. If you look at the reference, it's much more pointed. But nevertheless, we can still get kind of hopefully uh, an effective drawing and something with a bit of uh, expression in it. You can see I'm just kind of deepening the shadow on the underside of the head there to try and 
make the head in my drawing a little more pointed, get it back towards what it should be. But one of the one of the good things with drawing with the watercolour marker is you can either draw as if you were drawing with a marker or a pencil, like I did with the first sketch, or in this case, you can take a little bit more of a painterly approach, I would say, and kind of block in swathes of darker tone really quite quickly, like I am now. So, you know, I'm thinking more in terms of blocking in the silhouette, as I did with the first set of hash marks, and then blocking in the areas of deep tone. And you know, that transfers very well if you then switch to using watercolour paint or if you switch to using acrylic or oil. It's all, it's all kind of the same technique. You're just applying the paint in a different way. Um, and I've actually got some ideas for using this little sketch or something similar to it in the future. Uh, you may remember last week that I did a surreal sheet painting where we had a watercolour scene of some uh, some plants and flowers and then there were some sheep kind of wandering in amongst these flowers as if the sheep were either tiny or the, or the flowers were giant, depending on how you want to view it. And I quite like the idea um, of, because I quite often use cattle in my surreal paintings, I use sheep, but I don't think I've done any surreal horse paintings. Uh, so I may, I may stick this little foal lying down with front legs outstretched in the midst of uh, a landscape to be determined, but it, it'll probably be a floral uh, landscape to begin with, I think. I did, I did one of those the other day, just sat out in the garden, um, just relaxing in the sun, and uh, I kind of feel it, it'll be a nice, a nice, nicely weird juxtaposition to put uh, a horse in the middle of these giant flowers, especially one who's apparently so at ease with his surroundings, like this little chap here is on the side of the road. So there we go, there's that little sketch pretty much done. Uh, I think I'm going to add a couple of little tufts of grass, but um, hope, you, hope you've hope you enjoyed watching along with these sketches and uh, catching up on the news with me this week. And then I hope to return fairly soon. Well, I'll be back next week and I hope to get back to the full, time, full length demos, real time demos uh, fairly soon. Thanks very much for watching.